Hello. Hello. We're Land in Action and today we're doing a workshop on uh, the basics of mycology. Um, we're in Bulgaria. It's early spring. This day we're doing uh, because we think it'll be of use to other people. So what we're going to do today, Craig? Well, um, as part of uh, working with mycology, we're working with things that are very, very small. Um, we want to make sure that as we're doing our work, we get 100% success. Okay. So to do that, we need to have a clean environment. As you can see, we're outside. So how do we make a clean environment wherever we are? So we're going to make a small um, fume cabinet for all intents and purposes uh, that people can make from uh, standard equipment that they can find in any shop uh, close by and this will allow them to actually um, do mycology at home without having to in a, sterile, in a sterile environment without having to rework their entire house okay Okay, so Matt, what we need uh, to build one of our little uh, clean rooms is we first need a uh, container. So what you're looking for here is you're looking for something with a large opening. And ideally when it's rested on the, the table it's very flat because yeah. you're going to have your jars, your petri dishes, other things in there. So you want to be able to see through. So you want to be able to see through so it should be relatively clear. some holes in the, the door, yeah. the top lid of the one here, and this is where your arms will uh, stick through and that's where you're going to be working. And then we'll need um, some air, some clean airflow. Now, uh, in lots of shops these days, um, people find these, um, these airbed pumps. Um, they're ideal, they're low cost, camping um, shops, camping shops uh, hardware stores, these sort of places. They're, uh, they're very low cost um, they're, uh, and they've got a good hefty airflow. Okay. Um, ideally you want to make sure you get a, a mains power supply version and not ones that just go and okay, plug into the car. Okay. Um, now we're going to look at um, we're going to look at mounting this. This is a, a HEPA filter. Okay. This the idea behind this is to um, remove micro particles from the air. So other spores that are floating around in the air, other uh, mold spores, the kind of things that we don't want. Yeah. Okay. And they're everywhere. They're the everywhere. Time, everywhere. You're, every time you're breathing in, you're probably breathing in hundreds of different spores. Right. Okay. So we don't want those in our petri dishes or in our, uh, our food stock for right. our mycelium. And that looks like a um, vacuum cleaner. Filter, yes, isn't it? this is exactly what this is. This is a vacuum cleaner. Now, there's, um, there's two types. Um, you can get uh, vacuum bags, which are HEPA filter bags. Um, they look very similar, but they're generally made out of uh, cloth, flat cloth. You can get those, cut the, cut the edges off, and then just wrap those around your, your filter sure. and secure them with elastic band or something like this. We're going to get a little bit more clever with this one, and we're going to cut this off here, and we're going to silicone this to the, uh, the top of the, the air pump. Okay, and then we're going to use a, a pre-filter material. This is again um, standard uh, material. This is from a, um, a kitchen extractor. Um, we're going to use this as the pre-filter just to stop big particles from getting clogging up your hand filter. Okay, so that's okay. how you have to deal with it. Yeah, so so that the, we can increase the the, the length life of this uh, this filter. Okay, great. So let's get on with it. Yeah. Okay. As we said earlier, we're looking for things that we can use, which people can find readily available. Okay, so um, there's a lot of products out there now that use HEPA filters. There's HEPA filters in cars, there's HEPA filters in vacuums, and the reason they're using these is they want to remove the microscopic particles down to nanoscale, so that people who suffer with hay fever or who are allergic to sort of these uh, these particles. 
um, can remove that from the air. Okay. Now we're going to use that same uh, principle to make sure that we don't get any mold, spores or other things that we don't want contaminating our uh, sure. our mycology, yep. our petri dishes and our substrates. Yep. Okay. So this is from a vacuum, okay? Now in our purposes, this was manufactured for a particular brand. Now we're gonna attach this to the, to the front of the pump, okay? So we're gonna to have to remove this, uh, this plastic molding here. Yeah. So we have a nice flat surface that we can just stick some silicone on and stick it on there. Sure. Now, we're not gonna be using this 24 seven, 365 days a year, so it's gonna be something you're gonna use for an hour, maybe once a week or twice a week or whatever you're going to be doing. So for us, this will last us a long time. Right. Yeah? Yeah. So gluing it to the top of the pump, if worst That's case scenario, yeah. you can always take it off and put another one on. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pass this over to Miro and he's going to whip this off for us and then we'll get on to gluing. Right. Okay, so Mira's now taken off the uh, plastic that was here. So what we're going to do is mount this using silicone. We're going to place silicone here. Don't worry about if you get it slightly rough when you're cutting this off. Um, as Mira demonstrated, it's much better if you use a drill, high-speed drill, small drill bit. Uh, just cut off the plastic, and we're going to use a bit of silicone on here to basically glue this onto here. So the silicone will make sure it's a nice airtight seal, so we have no no air leakage. Okay, so let's do that now. We'll come back and show you later. So this is a silicone-like seal. Um, from a bitter experience, I know that this continues to discharge after you stop squeezing the trigger. This, uh, this pump onto here. So that when we're working, it's pumping fresh, clean air into the box.
So, now we're ready with the hole, we can see if we can fit this in. Okay, nice tight fit. Okay, so we're good to go. Okay, so yesterday you saw us fit the filter and the pump and uh, we were cut out the uh, armhole so we're going to work through these holes. So now we're going to fasten this, uh, this door onto the front of this, this box so that uh, you can access it, you can put all your equipment and everything you're going to need for your work uh, inside and then close it so that all the air pressure comes out through these holes so all you're getting is clean air passing out through the box. Okay, so we've attached the door, we've basically drilled four little holes through here and we've applied uh, cable ties just to give us a hinge so that we can open the door uh, for working. Okay, so Mira's now fitted our, uh, our door. Now we're going to put a, a pre-filter onto the HEPA filter that we prepared yesterday. So we've just cut a piece of, um, uh, of uh, extractor filter that you can have in the kitchen um, to place this around the, the HEPA filter. So, and we will use this um, and we'll just secure this with a couple of uh, elastic bands just to make sure that it stays in place. Easy as that. Okay. Okay. Um, depending on the uh, pump that you you get hold of, um, just look out if it has a ventilation on the back here. But you test the pump first because if it is sucking air through there into the pump, you also need to put apply a filter onto here also. Okay, so we're going to use this for now. We don't have another HEPA filter, so we'll just put a pre filter because the suction on here isn't very strong. So, okay, you're gonna make me you want to record me doing this now, huh? Yep. Yeah, it's more difficult than it looks, everybody. Those people on blue people are wrong. <laughs> it is what I made earlier. Right. <laughs> 